family of Exodus, both intimate and universal, small and astonishingly grand. The Exodus is the story of a family that became a nation, a story of God clashing with Egypt's gods and their intermediaries, and decisively defeating them. It is the story of one man uniquely equipped and called to lead God's people. of Levi married a Levi woman, and she became pregnant and gave birth to a son. When she saw that he was a fine child, she hid him for three months. But when she could hide him no longer, she got a papyrus basket for him and coated it with tar and pitch. Then she placed the child in it and put it among the reeds along the bank of the Nile. His sister stood at a distance to see what would happen to him. Then Pharaoh's daughter went down to the Nile to bathe, and her attendants were walking along the river bank. She saw the basket among the reeds and sent her female slave to get it. She opened it and saw the baby. He was crying, and she felt sorry for him. Listen to the Storyteller series wherever you get your podcast, or learn more at SalvationArmyRadio.org. Welcome back to Words of Life. I'm Bernie Day. This week in our series, Our House, Captain Paul Ryerson continues the story from last week about what Jesus said was the greatest commandment. When we love God with all of our heart, mind, and soul, we can't help but love others. That's the kind of church that I've got to me. One that makes you feel welcome and loved out of an outpouring of the people's love for God. Covered in your with your heart, soul, and mind. But what does loving God with your heart, soul, and mind mean? Now, today we, we read this particular scripture in English. This conversation originally most likely would have taken place in Aramaic or Hebrew, and it would have been written in Greek, then translated to Latin, then to German, and then to English. 
when we read it in our language, it just says to love God with your heart, soul, and mind. But if we went back to the Greek and read what they read, this is what it would say. It would say, agape, the Lord your God, with all of your cardia, and with all of your soke, and with all of your dionoa. Now you might be thinking that those are the Greek words for heart, soul, and mind. Not quite. When it was translated into English, heart, soul, and mind, were the best words in our language that could be used based on how we talk. But in English, we use analogy and metaphor to describe something that is hard to explain or to feel or touch. When I say, I love God with my heart, you know what I'm referring to. You know I'm not saying that I love God with my literal heart. That's an organ. The Greeks were a little more literal as most Eastern cultures are. I recall a few years ago, I took a trip to India. I was there representing the Salvation Army to some of our partners in mission. It didn't take long for me to realize that Eastern culture is very different than Western culture. Uh, not better, not worse, just different. If we saw a problem to be solved, our minds went in two different directions to solve it. Probably never agreeing on the path, but ultimately getting to the solution. Us Americans like to use metaphors, analogies, uh, sarcasm, and sayings. These did not translate. I would try to make my host laugh. They did not find me funny. American sarcasm is a foreign tongue. After the joke, you're waiting for the laugh, and it never comes. A missionary once told me that they knew they made it, meaning that they were accepted by the local culture, was when they can tell a joke and they would laugh. Now, what I did find in India was even though we may say it differently, the language of love was exactly the same. So what does the Greek say here in the scripture? Well, the Greek uses cardia, soke, and dionoa. But translated into English, it reads this. Love the Lord your God with all of your character and with all of your emotions and with all of your understanding or as we put it in English, your heart, soul, and mind. When you fully love God, you will give him your character, your emotions. They will reflect him. And he will give us peace where our understanding stops. If you were to read the scripture like that, then you would see it differently, perhaps in the same way they would have received it when Jesus spoke it on that day. When we look at the scripture saying our heart, soul, and mind, it doesn't quite give the same really impression of that of our character. Well, that's personal. That speaks to us. Of our emotions. Realizing that our emotions are actually belonging to God. Our emotions are something that sometimes controls us but it's the very thing that we can give to God for him to be glorified. And then when we look at our mind, now we may think that's our understanding, our education, but in Greek it really is our understanding. And this is hard for us. I like to control things and maybe we like to, to kind of, you know, build our own future, our own destiny, and we like to understand everything that we do. But here, understanding is saying that when we don't, when God is bigger than what our mind can comprehend, he's saying to give that to God. And he will give you peace that surpasses all understanding. If we do these things, when we are fully loving God, putting that into practice, then our cup will not be left empty. It will start to be filled with grace, 
with hope, with love, with salvation. Our cup will get so full that it will start to overflow. This is what happens when you love God. Your love starts to overflow. The second greatest commandment is found in the overflow of your neighbor as yourself. If your cup is empty, your neighbors will know. And what about you? Are you following the greatest commandment? Is your cup overflowing with love for others? If the church is going to be a place that loves God and loves others, it must first start with you. grace fall upon your church, that we, your disciples, follow the great command to love you with all of our heart, all of our soul, and all of our mind. Lord, we know that when we do this, that when we lean on you to fill our cup, that, Father, it just becomes natural and easy to love others. For, Lord, we know that the source of love is found at the cross. May we show that love to our neighbors. Army's mission, doing the most good, means helping people with material and spiritual needs. You become a part of this mission every time you give to the Salvation Army. Visit SalvationArmyUSA.org to offer your support. And we'd love to hear from you. 